futures, perpetuals, options. What are these derivatives and what is the difference between one and the other? And why and when should you use one over another? Well, this is what we're going to figure out in today's video. Welcome, everybody. Today, as mentioned, we're going to be diving deep into the derivatives market. We're going to understand what are these derivatives and how you can use them to make money. If you follow the channel, you know that I like to talk about options, which is one of the three derivatives that we're going to be covering in today's video. But a lot of people don't really understand the difference between options, futures and perpetuals and when to use one over the other. So today we're going to briefly start to understand these derivatives and how do they work. So let's start with futures. Futures are very common, probably the most common derivative that we have in cryptocurrency. We also have futures in the stock market. We have futures for a lot of commodities. So it isn't a crypto thing and it isn't new either. But futures became uh, very popular in crypto just because of how easy it is for the user to simply open a long or short position and profit with market movements. When we talk about the derivatives, all these derivatives are contracts. So imagine me and you are two people and they have a contract. They have an agreement between these two parties and this agreement is usually regarding an underlying asset. So for us, it can be Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, whatever token it is available for you to trade futures on. And in this contract, you have a an expiration date between these two parties and this contract obligates the buyer to buy this underlying asset at the expiration of that contract itself. It sounds a little bit complicated, but what actually ends up happening is that the buyer of this uh, contract is using this contract to speculate on the market, on the underlying asset. So, for example, you're going to buy a contract for a long position on Bitcoin. So you're going to go to your protocol of choice and you're going to select Bitcoin. You're going to select long and you're going to open a position, meaning that you're a buyer of this long contract. And most of the people are not interested in buying or selling Bitcoin at a specific price way down the line, which is usually in three months, so quarterly. So people don't really use these futures this way. They use it to profit when the underlying asset moves in their favor, so moves in a certain direction. If you're long, you want the underlying asset to go up. And if you're short, you want the underlying asset to go down. So as we mentioned, these futures have expiration dates, which mostly are quarterly, and they do offer the ability for the user to leverage. So let's say you have $1,000 in these future contracts, you can actually leverage it sometimes 10 15 or 100 x the value that you have so for example on binance you can leverage ethereum or bitcoin by 100 x meaning that if you put one thousand dollars there you're gonna have one hundred thousand dollars to trade with pretty much it is leveraged but of course this comes with risks of liquidation meaning that you are required to have a healthy margin there for you to not get liquidated or the underlying asset cannot go against your position for a certain price if it goes above or under these uh, these prices, you get liquidated, meaning that you're going to lose the whole amount that you deposited, the whole $1,000 in our example. So futures are amazing. They are very easy to understand. They're probably two to three clicks for you to open a position and start trading right away. If you have already money in the brokerage or money in this protocol, whatever. But this is where perpetuals come in because with perpetuals, you don't have the expiration. So instead of having the expiration that can be quarterly or whatever other um, expiration that the protocols offers, you don't have an expiration. You're pretty much um, ready to go and keep the position open for as long as you want. Of course, there are some caveats. You also need to have a margin and there's also a funding rate that you need to pay attention of. But it is indeed a very, very profitable way for you to speculate in the market, especially if you want to keep these positions open for a long time. So you just simply open a perpetual contract and you just simply wait it out until you can close it for profit as long as you stay inside the health factor needed to maintain your position open. So that sounds too easy, right? Then why are people using options? Why am I using options, for example? Well, options are also derivatives and they are also contracts, but they are more complex but complexity comes with a bonus meaning that you can make a lot more money 
confident with futures if you get to understand this complexity and you are a little bit more of an advanced trader. So in my case, I pretty much just sell options, meaning that instead of me having the uh, right but not the obligation of selling the underlying asset, I actually have the obligation to sell that underlying asset if I get exercised uh, with this contract, if this contract get exercised. Of course, with crypto option, it is still a very new thing. Most of these protocols don't use the underlying asset at all. It is just cash settled. So these assignments, they all happened in USDC or whatever other stablecoin. But with these options for the buyer side, so people that are speculating, they're also leveraged and they give the user the opportunity to make loads of money if the underlying asset goes in the same direction in favor of the option itself. So you can make lots of money. There are option traders that are very active and they do scalping, meaning that they open and they close position in the same day. There are people who do intraday trading. Uh, they open in one day and close in the next one. There are people who go for three, four months, maybe even one year uh, holding this position just because they're very bullish on the underlying asset at all. And options also give the ability for users to open multiple legs, meaning that they can create advanced strategies. For example, one that I usually do a lot is the short strangle, meaning that I can sell a call and sell a put both out of the money, creating a range for the underlying asset. So let's say for Ethereum right now, Ethereum is at $1,900 and I sell a $2,200 uh, call and I also sell a $1,400 put. I collect the premium for both of these because I am a seller. I sell it to someone. So I collect that premium for myself and I get to keep that premium. And because I opened a short call and a short put, I create this range, the range being 2200 and 1600, I think I said, or 1400, whatever that strike was. The two strikes that I sell are the range, the top and the bottom of the range for my underlying asset. So as long as by then the underlying asset, in our case, Ethereum, which was at 1900, stays inside this range, I am going to be profitable, meaning that um, the premium that I collected for both the call and the put, I'm going to be able to buy back these two options by expiration and they're not going to be worth anything. So I'm going to buy them for free. I'm going to close the position at zero. So let's say I collected 10 bucks for each side. So I collected 20 bucks to open this position to close it. I will pay to buy it back from the buyer because I sold it to the buyer. But because it is so far out of the money, it will be worthless. So I'm going to be buying it for zero dollars. So I wouldn't have any losses on the premium that I collected. I will keep the full premium. So you can see how it gets a little bit more complicated with options compared to the uh, how easy it is for you to open a position on a perpetual or with futures. You can simply think, is it going to go up or down? I just open a long or a short position and I can make money on both sides of the market. So perpetuals and futures are very, very simple. And this is something that I want to focus here, because as much as the tool itself is simple, doesn't mean that trading or predicting the market is simple as well. That's why we see a lot of protocols that are very, very profitable because they are uh, futures protocols or perpetual protocols and people can just go there and trade these derivatives. But if you actually look at these statistics for these protocols, there are a lot of losers and very few winners. So for example, GMX or Gtrade, you can be the liquidity provider, meaning that you're going to provide liquidity for those who are going to be longing or shorting the market. And if you actually look, you are more profitable by being a liquidity provider than you are for being a trader, because the fees that you collect for providing liquidity come from the people who lose money trading. And you can see that it is a lot of people. We have a lot of people who think that they can predict the market and they get wrecked by doing so. And this is where options, at least for me, my strategy, my winning strategy makes a lot of sense because when I sell an option, I don't try to predict where the market is going to go. I try to predict where it won't be, which seems contradictory, but it is actually easier because you don't need to be a genius to read a chart. You don't need to have paid indicators. You don't need to be a guru of trading. You just need to look at a chart. You need to have just the basic understanding of support and resistances, and you can open a short position that will be very, very safe by using the Greeks, by using indicators, by reading the news about the market. So but once you get a little bit more advanced into the trading, you will see how options offer way more upside 
uh, with way less risks than future does. And you understand that the majority of these people who trade futures are not actually profitable and they're just trying to become rich quick most of the time. So this is why I became an options seller, an options writer rather than a speculator, because um, I'm just providing, you know, I'm just the house. I'm just providing contracts for people who want to speculate, for people who want to try to make a quick buck while I uh, get little by little, I'm going to brick by brick building up my portfolio and eventually with the power of compounding interest, my portfolio will be huge and uh, very profitable as well. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't trade futures because I trade futures, I trade perpetuals as well. And when I have a clear vision of market conditions, I just go and play with some money that I'm okay with losing. I just go and play and most likely than not, I am actually profitable because these trades happen maybe once every two or three months. I'm not an active trader. I'm very, very passive. I just look for opportunities and then I can use some leverage on Binance. For example, I can go for 100 X. I can go for 75, 50 X, whatever it is that the market offers me. And I can profit from these very few occasions where the market is very easy to read. For example, in the Arbitrum launch, I did profit both on the long and on the short for the ARB token, because right at the beginning, I opened it long and made 75%, I think, on the single trade. And then I also made another 40% on the downside because I opened a short position right after. So you can see how that can be profitable once you uh, understand market movements or there are very clear market movements. Uh, but other than that, I just stick to my options trading, my options writing. If you want to know a little bit more about options writing, just scroll down a little bit. It's going to be the first link in the description is my Udemy course. It is very cheap and I think it will pay out by itself in a couple of weeks if you decide to join us. So I hope this was insightful and you understood the difference between futures, perpetuals and options. And if you have any questions, scroll down also and comment down below. I'll be gladly helping you answering all the questions that you have. So thank you so much and I'll catch you guys for the next video. See you.